Hello, my name is April Siebersma, and today I will be doing two monologues for you. The first is Fanny from Painting Churches by Tina Howe. The second is Suzanne from Picasso at Lapin Agile by Steve Martin. God, these bring back memories. There were real snowstorms in the old days, not these pathetic little two-inch droplings we have now. After a particularly heavy one, Daddy and I used to go sledding on the Coleman. This was way before you were born. God, it was a hundred years ago. Daddy would stop riding early, put on these galoshes and come looking for me, jingling the fasteners like castanets. It was a kind of mating call, almost. The common was always deserted after a storm. We had the whole place to ourselves. It was so romantic. We'd haul that sled up Beacon Street, stop under the state house and aim it straight down the Park Street Church, which was much further away in those days. Daddy would get on the sled, I'd lower myself on top of him, and we'd rock back and forth to gain it a few times to gain momentum, and then whoosh! Down we'd plunge like a pair of eagles locked in a spasm of lovemaking. God, it was wonderful. The city whizzing past us at 90 miles an hour. The cold. The darkness. Daddy's hair in my mouth. <laughs> God, remember how we used to go sledding in the old days? Sometimes he'd lie on top of me. <laughs> that was fun. I like that even more. <clears throat> Got it up. Two weeks ago, I was walking up the street one afternoon, and I turned up the stairs to my apartment, and I looked back, and he was there, framed in the doorway. I couldn't see his face, because the light was coming in from behind him, and he was in shadow. And he said, I am Picasso. And I said, well, so what? And he said he's not sure, but he thinks it means something in the future to be Picasso. He said that occasionally there is a Picasso, and he happens to be him. He said that the 20th century has to start somewhere, and why not now? Then he said, may I approach you? And I said, okay. And he walked up the stairs, and took my wrist, and turned it over, and took his fingernail and scratched it deeply into the back of my hand. In a second, in red, the image of a dove appeared. Then I thought, why is it someone who wants me can hang around for months, and I even like him, but I'm not going to sleep with him, but someone else comes along and says the right thing, and I'm on my back, not knowing what hit me. See, men are always talking about their things, like it's not them. They're things between their legs. See, it's not them. It's someone else. And it's true. It's like some rudderless fireworks making across town. But women have things too. They just work differently. They work from up here. So when a man comes on to me from up here, he's practically there already. Done. So the next thing I know, He's inside the apartment, and I said, what do you want? And he said he wanted my hair, my neck, my knees, my feet. He said he wanted his eyes on my eyes, on his chest on my chest. He said he wanted the chairs in the room, the note paper on the table. He wanted the paint from the walls. He said he wanted to consume me until there was nothing left. He said he wanted deliverance and that I would be his savior, and he was speaking Spanish, which didn't hurt our deadwood. Well, at that point, the word no became like a 
Polish village. Unpronounceable. I held out for seconds. Frankly, I didn't enjoy it that much because it was kind of quick. Thank you.